Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned into the Lone Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Dio, what's up? Hey, you haven't changed your shirt and hat from like two episodes ago. I know, it's, you know, it's hard, it's hard out there. Yeah, what's the matter? You've been eating the Tide Pods and not <laughs> using them for uh, doing laundry? You know, sometimes, I did, I, I did have a pile of laundry though, that I haven't. Well, you saw last week I started. I was dressing more casual because I ran out of dress shirts and dress pants. Do you do just your laundry or do you do your laundry and your wife's laundry? My mom still does my laundry sometimes. Get out of town. That's so awesome. Because she irons them. I can't iron, bro. Do you iron jeans? No. No? It's just out, straight out, no. Okay. I just, I'm very difficult. My mom's very good at it. Ironing, like, you know, folding the sheets that have the uh, elastic in it. Can't do that either. 36 years old and still a mama's boy. I love it. Dude, my son will be, he's, he, he already looks up to you. Now he's really going to look up to you because uh, I think he said it's like all along. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to be a mama's boy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I love my mom. Shout out, mom. Shout out, Mrs. Coleman. Yeah. All right. Hey, so today's episode. Yeah. Your suggestion. Hey. And um, you're going to title it. Okay. I'll tell the audience like where the inspiration came from, but um, what what am I going to be just blabbering about today for the next whatever minutes? It's your job to get the lead. It's like, no, it's your job. Like, your job is to get leads. It's not the, hey, it's your job, not my job thing. No, this is like, it's your job. Mm. You have one job. You had one job. Go get a freaking lead. Yeah. And when you're done, go get another lead. But it is your job to get leads. And, and here's where this comes from. Now, I know some of our viewers, they work in environments where it's not their job to get leads, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But what we teach and preach and we talk about on the show is eventually getting to a point in your career mm -hmm. where you want to be the person who gets the lead because he or she that controls the lead does what? Gets the money. Gets the money, yeah. yeah. They control the revenue. You control the revenue. You get to keep the lion's share mm -hmm. of the revenue. Right, I was listening to Rob Chrisman's interesting Rob Chrisman's podcast. So Rob Chrisman's a big name in the mortgage industry, and he has a daily email. Mm -hmm. His son Robbie Chrisman, who I believe lives in like Austin, Texas, started taking his dad's written words and putting it to a format like ours. Okay, right. Well, Robbie sounds like he's about our age, so duh, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Like this is what all the cool kids are doing. Yeah. But anyhow, they have on this guy Garth Graham. Garth, big name. In the mortgage industry, especially if you're into mergers and acquisitions, he works for a company called Stratmore. Stratmore is a fantastic company. They do a lot of analytics, a lot of research, um, and they can also help you out if you're trying to buy or sell your mortgage company. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was really cool, what they were talking about today was uh, cost and overhead. And they look at loan officer compensation as a large cost, probably the largest cost. Mm. Like if a loan costs $5,000 to produce, 3000 goes off to LO compensation, 2000 goes to everything else. Mm -hmm. But mortgage companies don't worry about loan officer compensation as much because it's a variable cost, meaning you only pay it when and if a loan gets produced. Mm -hmm. All right. So that being said, I was thinking about listening to Robbie Chrisman do his podcast off of his dad's uh, daily mm -hmm. email commentary, Garth Graham, he was interviewing and, um, and then, and then it kind of correlated that today with the class I taught yesterday yeah. and our boy, Jimmy, right? J shout out Jimmy Nadu. Shout out Jimmy. Jimmy Nadu, rookie loan officer. I think he's on like day 37 of his career. Jimmy, I've already anointed. I think he'll be one of our next rookies of the year. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be interviewing him the same way I interviewed Casey McElroy, Word. the same way we're going to be bringing in Mike Williams. Wink, wink, nod, nod, a little foreshadowing. You're not going to want to miss that episode. Mike Williams, rookie loan officer, been in this business for 13 months and in 13 months has closed over 100 units. Damn. Uh, yeah, he shattered any, any uh, record Casey uh, yeah. did. And and Jimmy, I think, is going to follow in their shoes. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about leads, and we're talking about making money, and, and we're going to tell a little bit of a story about Jimmy. Uh, and it came up yesterday when I was doing my Dio's Mortgage School. Yeah. All right. Uh, so paint a little bit of a picture for, for everyone. Okay. I kind of went off topic on the Garth Graham thing and the $3,000. All I was getting at is is that if it costs five grand to produce a loan, three of it's going to loan officer compensation. That's where all the money is. Yeah. So if you're a loan officer, you want to be a loan officer because you want that three grand, yeah. but you can only get that three grand if you focus on the leads. The leads. You have to be the man or the woman who brings in the lead. And if you're not the person bringing in the lead and you're doing loans for a living, I promise you, you're not making $3,000 per loan. 
Right? Yeah. You're not. Yeah. At, at, you know, there's a compensation give and take. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to go out and get the lead, then you don't get the lion's share of the compensation. If you yes. want to get the lion's share of that three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, then you need to be the person that goes out and get the lead. But as loan officers, especially younger in our career, but even loan officers with twenty years experience, do you focus on getting the lead? Uh, yeah, I focus on getting the lead, but you know, I like to know the products, policies, and procedures more than anything. Yes, yes. That's what I want to get into. And John knows this because um, for those that, that don't work in, in our corporate structure, uh, every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., I teach a class. It's called Dio's Mortgage School. It's a no-holds-barred uh, class. I don't have an agenda. I don't have topics. I don't have notes. There is no syllabus. There is no outline. I ask that those that attend come and we talk about what confused them the past week. What did they have to overcome? What did they not understand? What did they encounter? Mm -hmm. It could be everything from a conversation they had with a realtor, a conversation they had with a borrower, or something that is product related, program related, guideline related, or it could just be understanding the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, why do we do this this way? And at which point I can start teaching a history lesson. Well, this is how things were in the 1980s. Then they were in the 90s. Then they were in the 2000s. And now you're in the 2020s. And this class is great for those that are newer in their in their careers. Sure. Although it's really cool that top producers are constantly stopping right, by. Right, cool, yeah. um, And then I think some of them are going to stop coming by because I call on them, and they're like, "No, oh, wait, I, hey, easy, I'm no." Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, don't call on me. I'm just looking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just window shopping here, <laughs> yeah. please. Yeah. Um, and I get that because sometimes I do go window shopping, and then someone runs up to me, "Hey, sir, hey, no, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I yeah. promise you, if I'm going to buy something, I will make sure I'll you get your commission. You know. yeah, yeah. I will let you know. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, so here's how the day uh, unfolded. So. I taught the class, and the class ended up being about jumbo loans, mm -hmm. right? That's what we spent most of the time on. But the whole time, Jimmy is just raising his hand and peppering me with questions about, well, what about this? What about that? Yeah. What about this? And I'm like, Jimmy, you'll you'll cross that bridge when you get there. I kept on wanting to say, go get a loan, and then you'll research it. And that wasn't good enough. And then I, the, the class ended. like We had gone over time. Yeah. And Jimmy was like, well, hey, how about this scenario? How about this scenario? And I'm like, you know what? Let's spend at a minimum 20 minutes on, on, on the podcast, if not the full 45 or 50. <laughs> yeah. And let's just talk about what it means. Like your job is to go out and get a lead. Your job is not necessarily to know every product program, underwriting guideline inside and out. Now, you may be like, Dio, you're contradicting yourself. Because I have said many times, I have pimped out companies like Zenix yeah. a plethora of times. Yeah. Because you do need to be a solid technician. Correct. You have to know your craft, right? You have to know it, mm -hmm. but you're never going to know everything. So you have to know enough that you are a solid technician, and then you have to know how to get the answers when it matters. Mm. So, so many times when I see people fail in this industry, they fail for two reasons. And one reason isn't a failure. They don't like it. Like, look, if you don't like this industry, then, then yeah, move on. Mm -hmm. Go find something you do like. Life is too short to work in a career or an industry that you don't like. Yes. I'm not saying you're going to love it because I don't love my job all days. I love my job most days. For sure. But I was one of those that was bitten by the bug. If you're working in this industry and you've been in the industry for 6, 12, 18 weeks, and you've been bitten by the bug, you know what I mean, because you're all in. Mm. Come hell or high water, regardless of how many hours you have to work, how many months or quarters or years you have to starve, you can always see a light at the end of the tunnel. So for those people, this is a great industry. But some, there's some people who are bitten by the bug, and they still fail. Mm. Well, how do they fail? Because they don't focus on the lead. I have a... Um, I'm going to go back and date myself. This was probably like 12, 13 years ago. One of the first guys I ever mentored in this industry. I knew by week three of mentoring him, he wasn't going to make it. Hmm. Now, he ended up being a fantastic firefighter slash EMT, yeah. right? Great dad, great husband, not a great mortgage guy. Really? And here's how I knew he was not going to be good. He was out of training because the company that, that I got into the industry with, they put us through a nine-week training program where they put us up in hotels. They put us through Zenix training, hmm. like... They also made us sing Kumbaya, hold hands, drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it was an ex a pretty intensive training. So then by the time that we hit the ground, 
we had nine, 10 weeks underneath our belt. Yeah. So this guy's now on week 12, week 13. He should have been doing nothing besides going out and lead generating, marketing, and branding himself. Mm -hmm. I go by his office one day, and he's putting together an Excel spreadsheet. Well, I find that impressive because I find anyone who knows Excel to be <laughs> sure. elite. He's right. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm just going to create a matrix real quick of all the loan products. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I said, hey, just make sure you don't spend a whole lot of time on that because you still have to get out there and make sure you made your 12 sales calls today. 12. That's all I ask people to do. Like, can you pick up the phone 12 times a day, every day, usually for only 12 weeks, introduce yourself to 12 people, ask 12 people to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, in hopes that one says yes. If you're able to do that, then over the next 12 weeks, you would have met with 60 people. That's assuming you're not also following my advice and working open houses on the weekend, yeah. at which point you would meet more people. Correct. If you don't heed that advice, but you heed the first part, then you would have met face to face with 60 people. Those 60 one-on-ones would have led you to 12, 12 people that they liked you, you liked them. They are, are professionals who care about being good at what they do. You're a professional who cares about being good at what you do. Collectively, you are going to partner up. You're going to help people become pre-approved for financing. They're going to help find them homes. You're going to finance their homes. They get paid. You get paid. Your home buyer moves into the house. They start building generational wealth, and everyone is happy. Well said. Okay, like that is – so this guy, just call him Jay. Mm -hmm. Jay was in his Excel spreadsheet. So then still new at being a mentor and, and still new in this relationship, I just say, hey, cool. Maybe try to find a way that you could turn this into a sales piece. Like, I understand he's making this Excel spreadsheet for himself because he wants to know yeah. the difference between a 97 and a 95 and VA and FHA and USDA, and he's trying to figure it all out. And back then, there was a plethora of products, yeah. 80-20s, and there was Flex 100 and, you know, all these my communities, like just these crazy loan products that we don't have today. Um, I'm like, just, you know, just go ahead and, and make it make it for yourself. Make it something that is Useful, good enough yeah. that you can hand to a realtor. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. So that, that came and went. Two weeks later, so now he's in month three. This is this, uh, week three. Yeah. Week three. This is when I knew it wasn't gonna work out. This isn't gonna work out. I go by his desk. Have your sales calls come. Ah, uh, uh, I'm like, no, like last week. How many did you do? Well, I talked to, and, and the person who it was, it was his wife's aunt, mm. the same person he'd been talking about. Like, oh. like, oh yeah, yeah. Since I started mentoring him, and this is common to a bunch of newbies, like they want to talk about their one pre-approval. Yeah, and I'm thinking, well, you need 20 pre-approved buyers in order to define eight closings. Yeah, yeah. So if you only have one, bro, you got to wait. You got to wait to go. Yeah, then you have one quarter of a closing. Yeah. Like you got to go out and, and pre-approve four more people. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in order to pre-approve 20, you may have to talk to 40. Mm -hmm. Right. So like your job is to get leads. Right. Yeah. Like you got to go out and get a lot of leads to turn half of them into pre-approved buyers in order to make sure that you're closing half of the people that you, that, that you got, you know, turned into pre-approved buyers. So he had been talking about that one realtor and we all, we all, we all go through this. This is part of the maturation process, mm -hmm. but here he was three weeks out of training. So he did nine weeks of training. Now he's three weeks out of training. The one realtor that, that he talked about meeting with was the one he told me about on day one, which yeah, was his yeah, wife's yeah. aunt, which is yeah. a bit of a layup. And he's like, well, I just got to I just gotta finish knowing all these products. Yeah, I got to. Yeah. I've been studying at night. I've been trying to learn. Yep. I just don't want to be wrong when someone asks me a question. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. So then I fast forward 16 years later, and, you know, there's Jay, and we have hired and fired, you know, 30 others that, you know, fell in that same trap. Yeah. And we have mentored 20 successful yeah. rookies who started going down that path. And we were able to divert, turn them around, and point them in the right direction. Yeah. And Jimmy's going to be one of those. Jimmy gets it. Like yeah. today, honestly, shout yeah. out to Jimmy again. He was in my office because he was pumped up. Had six great phone calls with realtors today. Yeah. Six. Yeah. That means he had to dial 18 times. That's what I'm saying. He dialed 18 times. He got six people on the phone. And he was like, oh, my God. And they wanted to talk to me. It's I'm like, yeah, it's a good feeling. I said, for the most part, Jimmy and every loan officer that's that's listening, realtors need loan officers. It's a partnership. It is a partnership. Now, not every realtor is looking for a loan officer the day that you call them. Right. Not every realtor is expecting a loan officer to call them the day that you call them. So you may catch someone on a bad day, and you may catch someone who has their stable of LOs, yeah. and that's okay. That's why it's a numbers game. Yep. But you have to make those phone calls. You have to focus on on getting leads. If you focus on, like Jay did back in 2006, 
if you focus on knowing everything inside and out, you're a fool because A, you'll never know everything inside and out. There's too much to know. Your brain is not a computer, right? You, you just, you don't have the ability. Mm -hmm. And B, it changes. All the time. All the freaking time, it changes. But do you know why I think, uh, speaking from experience, why they might do that? It's like avoiding the work you don't want to do. Like, damn, I really don't want to fucking make these calls. I don't want to make these calls. So I'll focus my, I'll do work. I'm doing something. So it makes you feel busy. Like I got something accomplished, but not the, you know, you're not getting leads. But I had worked in the spreadsheet. I did something today. Oh, 100%. I was working. I feel good. I, I worked all day. But did you get a lead? No, no, but I, but I did all this stuff and I built this. But did you get the lead? Because yeah. it makes them feel self-accomplished because they're avoiding what they don't want to do, which is the most difficult part, which is picking up the phone and making calls. So they distract their time with foddle or whatever yeah go read the book eat the frog eat the frog i think it's eat that frog eat that, eat frog? that frog okay yeah. yeah it talks about you i mean who likes to eat frogs some people nah frog yeah. legs maybe yeah that's yeah right. but um but but if, if you read the book the, the premise of the book is tackling the grossest thing first because mm. once it's done everything else that you do behind it will be easier but i gonna promise you this because you're right john you're right. The reason why they do that is because they're petrified and scared to go do something that is foreign to them, right? But that's the whole no pain, no gain. Like, that's legit, right? Olympic athletes talk about it because if they don't put their body through immense amounts of pain through training, mm -hmm. they don't get better, mm -hmm. right? On our end, no pain, no gain. What's the most uncomfortable thing that we need to do? And let's make that our priority. And by the way, the most uncomfortable thing also tends to be the most important, which is <laughs> finding a lead. Finding a lead, yeah. But it's just asinine if you think about it. If you think that knowing everything inside and out is the most important thing, you're, you're playing a losing game because the rules are constantly changing. The rules are changing because the guidelines are changing. What we could do, let's just think about investment properties yeah. and, and let's think about um, second homes. Yeah. Like 90 days ago, pricing on those types of loans was advantageous, making yeah. it easier for people to qualify. Yeah. Today, that's not the case. Yeah. So already, but then you look at, well, how are we treating student loan debt? That changes. How are we treating borrowers who are self-employed? Because that's changing, mm -hmm. right? Things are changing constantly that you can't know at all. You have to know the bullet points. You have to know the big, mm -hmm. the big items. And then there's nothing wrong with telling someone Hey, you know what? The guidelines recently changed on that. Let me get back to you. Yeah. The borrower won't know. No, no, no nor does a realtor. You, you need to be able to assert yourself as the expert. Yeah. You need to be able to talk high level about the, the differences. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to explain why you need someone's tax returns and what you need to go research. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with answering basic questions and then letting people know, I'm going to need to first obtain the information and then I'm going to go figure out mm -hmm. after I have your information, what it exactly does it you qualify in today's market? Right? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not supposed to know everything. And do you know proven the number one way to learn something? Uh, to study it? Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Like that's one of my favorite parts of Goodwill hunting is when Robin Williams has Matt Damon on the park bench overlooking the river in in um, um, in Boston, right? And he's just kind of going off at Matt Damon saying, you've read books on Da Vinci and you've, you know, you you could quote sonnets from mm -hmm. Shakespeare, but it's still you, until you've actually been in that Sistine Chapel and you've stared up at that painting mm -hmm. done by Da Vinci until you've actually fallen in love, you won't really know what love is. Mm -hmm. Like you'll learn how to do a loan by doing it. You'll learn it also by looking it up. Hmm. That's another thing. You'll learn it by looking it up, but look it up when it matters. Right. Ask me this. Do I know how to finance a mobile home? Um, do you, like, personally? Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure the guidelines... I'm, yes? No. Nope. Hmm. No, I don't care. I don't care to learn it. I know enough. I know enough that we do double-wides. I know enough that if... Uh, if it's a conventional financing, my company only does 80%. I know enough that uh, I can do one FHA. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, well, what's the minimum credit score? I'm like, you know what? On that one, I, I don't know. But let me do this. Let me get your information. Let me take a look. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get back to you. Because on credit score, we may have a minimum of 
680 uh, credit score, but I can go down to a 660 if your DTI is under 41. Hmm. I don't need to know any of that until I actually have a manufactured right. home borrower in front of me. Have you ever run into a situation where like the LO was the opposite? Like they were great at like bringing the leads, but like were bad on uh, the Yeah, other. yeah, yeah. Look, there's a reason why I, I preach on this show. Like you got to be a great technician. You can't just be a great lead generator. I promise you it doesn't work. It doesn't work just being a great lead generator. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to be able to do yeah. good research. But what I'm, what I'm really trying to stress is never, ever, 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 ever make it your priority to know everything that there is to know mm -hmm. if it means that you're not closing loans, if it means that you're not getting leads. Mm -hmm. The people who fail at this business fail because they don't make lead generation their number one, their number two, or their number three priority. I mean, you just, I mean, if, if you came and worked here for as a rookie loan officer, I'm only going to let you do your Xenix training for three hours a day. Mm. That's another five hours. I'm going to make you shadow someone who is more senior than you mm -hmm. for an hour. And then I need you to work on your book of business for four hours. Mm. Half of your day needs to be sent selling, prospecting. Whether you're reaching, whether you're a seasoned vet and you're reaching out to, um, cold leads, whether you're reaching out to past clients, whether you're calling your realtor database of, you know, your friends in the real estate business that sell real estate for a living that've worked with you in the past and checking in to see how you could bring them value or you're you're creating uh, a partnerships or scheduling meetings with new realtors. Mm -hmm. Or taking pre-approvals over the phone. Like half of your day needs to be selling. Yeah. Um, the other half of the day needs to be technical, mm -hmm. whether it's a, you know, going to a training or stacking a file or submitting something to, to processing. Mm -hmm. We fail in this industry when we make lead generation not our number one, number two, and number three priority. And I see it all the time in rookies, you know, guys like Jimmy. Jimmy's super smart. Jimmy's in, in the class. Like, Hell I mean, is smart. He knows math. Yes. You know, he, he knows yeah. math. Yeah, he's a math whiz. He's running numbers in his head. Yeah. When I call on Jimmy, he never freezes. He always has the answer. Yeah. But with him, I have to stress, and, it's, and, and I stress it because I've seen this happen yeah. 10s, 20s, 50 times, where it's this paralysis that you think you have to know everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you, Jimmy already knows more than 99% of the American pipelines about the mortgage industry. He already knows more than probably 80% of every realtor in the marketplace, there's some realtors who've been around and they know their stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, he's at a point now where it's like, you'll learn that particular loan when you go out and get one. Yeah. Go out and get one, work on it, get your hands dirty, and that's when you'll learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's just, that's the name of the game. That's what you need to do. Yeah. So if you're tuning in, I don't care if you're one day on the job or if you're working on year 21. Please know that your number one job is to go out and create a lead. Everything else will fall into place. You have to be a good enough technician that you don't sound like a total noob. You know, you 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 have you have to be able to speak intelligently about your industry. But please never ever ever make knowing every piece. I mean, underwriters. Underwriters don't know every piece of every guideline. Yeah. Underwriters have to reference the handbook, have to look up guides, right, yeah. utilize Ask Polly, go into all regs, hit up your company, internet, programs, products, and guides. Right? And even then, an underwriter will, will read something from page 72, section 3C, and to them it means yellow and to me it means orange yeah. then we have to get someone to come in and mediate that conversation yeah. so it's like trying to 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 be like oh i i can't i can't go out and, until i know no i'm going to tell you right here on this show make that phone call make that sales call schedule that meeting make getting leads your priority everything else will fall into place as long as you never turn a blind eye to being a great technician because you do have to become a great technician Study, learn the basics, learn it well enough that you can teach it at a high level, mm -hmm. and then research everything else after that. That's great. Great That's advice. That's all we have. That was good. Hey, if you like what we're doing, please check us out. Spotify, Apple Podcast, YouTube. YouTube's a great place to leave yeah. comments. If yeah. you want to um, tell us we're doing a great job, we love to hear that. It yeah. keeps us motivated. Yes. If you want a future... Uh, shows based on certain criteria. 
We love to hear from yep. that too. Whether you email us, hit us up on LinkedIn. We're on LinkedIn at the Loan Officer Podcast. I'm on LinkedIn as Dustin Owen. We're on uh, Facebook, Instagram at the Loan Officer yep. Podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Share us with friends. Give us some feedback. Check us out. Yep. Continue to tune in. We'll continue putting out uh, information. Hopefully you find it useful. Yep. He's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen, and that's all the time we have for today. Peace. Peace.